Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm in the mood for some big, big emotions and I don't think I've properly cried to a book since Archer's voice, like, and I'm talking sobbing my heart out since then. And I think I read that in June. So I need some big emotions. I just wanna cry my heart out. I wanna get lost in a silly little book and basically just cry. For a week that is what this video is going to be i have a couple of books planned i have a rough little tbr as to what i'm going to be reading in this video because i've heard great reviews great things about them people have said that they literally wanted to die after reading them basically because they were that sad so that is exactly what i'm craving right now there's a little story about the first book that i'm going to be reading for today's video and i bought it because i just wanted to read it it was just one that i had on my tbr and i didn't even know it was sad and then i posted it on my story and everyone was like this book's gonna break your heart this book's gonna crush your soul and i was like hold on i had no idea that that is what I was going to get into for this book. So that is Say You Swear by Megan Brandy. Again, as I said, wanted to read this forever. Just didn't know that it was actually sad. It is on the longer side. I will say it is, I think, just over 500 pages. Room for a ride to say the least, but so excited to get into this one. So I do know that I am capable of crying to a book. Obviously, as I said before, Archer's voice basically shattered my entire soul. And I think about it every single day since I read it. But I even remember back in like 2015, whenever it came out, I read Girl Online by Zoe Sugg and Girl Online on Tour and like that little series. And I reread it every year, every September, I picked up those books. I remember just being like three o'clock in the morning, sobbing my heart out. And they wasn't even particularly sad books. They were just like little cute YA romances. So if I'm sobbing that bad at that, what am I gonna think about this? I am actually terrified. <laughs> oh, let's get on with this video. I'm, oh my God, I'm scared. So I have heard through the grapevine, the little booktube grapevine, that there's a lot of characters introduced in this book at the very, very start. That normally does scare me away from books, I won't lie. Introducing a lot of characters within like the first chapter just boggles with my mind. It's just very, very confusing. And I will say, I am on page 10 and I've already met five characters. So yeah, obviously it's just like a little bit harder to keep up with, but I'm sure if the friendship group is quite present in this book, obviously I'll soon catch on to like who I'm reading about and stuff. And it seems to be like one or two point of views throughout the whole book. So it shouldn't be too hard to sort of grasp in my head. So yeah. So I've read up to chapter 7, which is page 66, and I realised I didn't even tell you what the book was about, so my bad. But obviously, from what I know, it has a little American football on the front cover, so I'm assuming it's going to be sort of like a sporty romance, but I'm not sure like how present that is in the book, but hopefully it is. The other thing that I know is that this is a love triangle, which I know that a lot of people don't really like, but our main character, Ariana, she's basically in love with this guy, one of her best friends, since she was very, very little, since they were born, I think, because I think their parents knew each other in college or something, and they've grown up together. Together. they're like family basically but unfortunately the guy she likes does not like her back we have all been there she's obviously upset she's like look why why am I not good enough for this guy why does he not love me back and she then meets a new man who oh my god I'm so excited to meet because I've heard nothing but good things about him from the people that read this book they are like Noah Riley is the ultimate book boyfriend but obviously it's gonna be one of them frustrating things where it's like who does she end up with does she go for the original guy does she go for Noah like I don't know. And I know that love triangle isn't the most favoured trope in the world. I know that some people absolutely hate it, but I think when it's done well, it can be really, really good. So I'm hoping that it doesn't get a little bit too frustrating. I hope that I have like one clear winner and I hope he wins. I don't know who I'm going to root for yet. I don't know who I'm going to go for. I need to learn a bit more about the boys first to decide, but yeah, all going well so far. Happy with where I'm at at the moment. So I'm around 40% in to Say You Swear right now and I'm yet to shed a tear. Don't get me wrong, I'm actually thoroughly enjoying the actual book. But in terms of sadness, which is obviously the purpose of this video, not that sad yet. Obviously there are definitely some sad themes throughout it and we are sort of slowly getting introduced to really sad topics, but I'm yet to actually cry. I've definitely had times where I've felt like a little bit emotional or tears have like pricked the back of my eyes, but none have actually fallen yet and that is what we want. And I'm nearly halfway through, so I'm hoping that the second half of the book picks up a little bit more in terms of sadness. If I'm like this attached in the first half, the second half is gonna be a ride. Noah Riley is 
now we're rallying. He has me giggling and kicking my feet right now. So we're just going to take a little break, a little brief intermission to tell you who this video is in collaboration with. So as you guys probably know by now, I have been counting down the days for the cosy nights, the dark evenings, the early evenings. And since the clock's changed, obviously I've been in my element. But that can obviously make reading a little bit hard because obviously it's getting darker earlier. I have a solution to help with this and as you can see behind me, this video is in collaboration with Serious Lights. I wanted to share this light with you because I'm being honest, since the clocks went back that has been an absolute godsend. The light itself actually has daylight wavelength technology and it replicates sunlight as close as scientifically possible. Possible, which obviously means that when it gets dark really early it's a lot easier to be able to see my book I've been able to stay up later while reading and all in all basically been able to read more because of it of course as well it is also adjustable so you can set it for your preference obviously the darker it gets the lighter I put the light just to make sure that I can definitely see and get everything I want out of it but if you are looking for a new reading light for yourself, then definitely check out Serious Lights. So the one that I personally got is the floor lamp because I knew that I'd be sitting here in my little reading corner. But they also do table lamps, they do a range of different colours as well. But if you do want one for yourself, then you can use my code SR497 for £100 off your order and free delivery, which is just amazing. I've absolutely adored using this light over the last couple of months. I'm just so glad that I have it because it's just made my life so much easier and I 100% recommend getting one. chapter 43 page 405 and I think I have just about 100 pages left maybe a little bit more and this book is getting good obviously it was good the whole time but right now I'm so invested oh my god oh my god I'm feeling so much for this character right now The one thing that I love the most in books is when the author puts the title of it in there. So for example, in this book, it's like, say you swear, and the other person goes, I swear. And I don't know why I love that so much, but I just love it when the title is in there. I just, I don't know why, it just makes me feel a type of way. I'm on the last 20 pages. This book has been a roller coaster to say the least. Oh my God. That is lovely. I love you with all that I am and more. Oh my God, that is the sweetest thing ever. Oh, that was a beautiful ending to such an amazing book. Okay hey guys, I have finally finished Say You Swear by Megan Brandy. And upon reflection, I've been sat here thinking, I think I'm gonna rate it a four and a half star because I really enjoyed the plot, I really enjoyed the characters, I really enjoyed the turn that it took at the end because I wasn't expecting that plot twist at all. But obviously there were just sort of like things that I would potentially change. For example, when looking at it as a book as a whole, I think it was really, really good and I would definitely recommend it. However, when I'm looking at it in terms of sad books, which is obviously what this video is for, it didn't make me cry as much as I wanted it to. But I think I can put it down to the pacing of the book. I feel like something big would happen and then the pacing would go. Then something sad would happen, then the pacing would go. Then something would happen. Do you know what I mean? I think in order for me to cry, it literally just needs to keep going boom, 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 if that makes sense. I feel like the roller coaster of the pacing of the book made it seem for me to not get too emotional, if that makes sense. I feel like I need something on high alert the whole entire time to make me think, oh my goodness, I'm gonna burst into tears. But other than that, the plot was very, very good. As I said, the characters were enjoyable. It just didn't make me cry. I'm not gonna lower my rating for that reason. It was very, very good and I highly recommend it. Yeah, four and a half star. I'm scared to go on to our next book, but I will update you probably tomorrow. I'm gonna have a little break and then I will see you tomorrow for our next book. Guys, it is the next evening and it is time to start a next book. I feel like I've recovered enough from reading Say You Swear. Not that I even found it that sad, but I still needed like an afternoon and a day to just sort of clear my head of it. And as you can see by the book I'm holding in my hand, I'm going to start A Thousand Boy Kisses. I personally have heard nothing but great things about this book. People have literally told me that they started crying from page 12. I'm not sure if I'm emotionally ready for that, but I kind of hope that I am at the same time. I'm not sure how much reading I'm going to get done tonight because I do have to edit another video and stuff. Just got a little couple of things to do, but I am going to get it started at least. And I am nervous, I can't lie to you. If I ask like the average reader who reads the same books as me what the saddest book they ever read was, they usually say this. And this one I've been purposely saving to film this video because I was like, I've wanted to read this for ages, but I was like, no, when I do my sad video, 
video, this is gonna be in it. So I've waited. This is a very long awaited, anticipated read for me. I do personally feel like I'm gonna enjoy this one maybe a little bit more than I enjoyed Say You Swear, only because it is shorter. Not that that should matter as a factor as to why I would enjoy a book or not, but I feel like books that are more straight to the point get me more riled up. So from what I'm aware by reading the blurb, this book is about a girl called Poppy. It's kind of like a childhood friends to lovers kind of thing. Poppy and Rune get together when they're really, really young and they are happy, but Rune's actually from Norway and Rune suddenly has to make his departure back to Norway and obviously they end up not talking for a couple of years because they're now long distance and life gets in the way and it's all frustrating. But then Rune makes his sudden return, but he's not the same boy that she used to know, if that makes sense. He's sort of changed in a way. I can just imagine from that, it's gonna be really, really sad. <laughs> so I'm gonna get started on it now. So the book starts from when they're five years old. So you literally get flashbacks from the first chapter. This is crazy. I'm on page eight and the dark themes, they're already coming. today. Hello guys, a little update for you. I'm currently in my work car park as I always am. I for some reason always vlog in this car park. But I actually had to stop in the middle of a chapter last night because I got so tired when reading and obviously I had to wake up for work. But I'm currently on page 175, which is just over halfway through. So definitely making my progress with the book. I haven't really made any more updates from when I last updated you till now, only because I haven't really cried since. No tears have actually been shed. I've definitely got emotional. Definitely things that have happened. I found out some really important stuff as well in the book. I'm excited to carry on reading but obviously I do have to go to work today which sucks because I just want to sit and binge this book but I just thought I'd give you a little update anyway yeah thoroughly enjoying this book so far though and I can't wait to carry on because it's getting me in my feels this is what I needed from this video finally time to finish this book. I don't think I'm emotionally ready for this because I don't have long left. I've been crying about it all day and my feelings are probably about to get absolutely destroyed. friends literally played one of my favorite One Direction songs to her and if you've read this book you'll know why. I finished the book. I'm still crying about it like 10 minutes later. That was honestly like one of the most beautiful books that I've ever read in my life. <sighs> I don't think I can even comprehend a rating or review for it right now. So I'm probably just gonna update you in the morning because that is just, my brain is just frazzled. <laughs> 
Okay guys, it's actually future me coming back into this vlog now to tell you about my thoughts on this because I completely forgot to do it. And to be honest, I still don't even know what I want to say. Obviously it's been a couple of days now. I've actually finished filming this vlog. I've read all the books that I need to read for it and I still can't even comprehend my thoughts on this book. All I know, and I've been thinking long and hard about this, about my rating, is that I'm going to rate it a five star. I absolutely fell in love with this book literally from page one. I was hooked straight away. I was attached to the characters straight away. I wanted what's best for them straight away and I was just rooting for them from start to finish. I still can't even comprehend what I want to say, especially without spoiling anything. And obviously I've sat and read reviews and stuff since because there's nothing better than when you finish a book going on to good read and seeing what other people think about it. A lot of people weren't happy with the ending, the epilogue or whatever, which I personally didn't really know what to think of it at first, but not in a negative way. I was just thinking of all the possibilities. It's sort of like open to interpretation. Oh, it's so hard to discuss without spoiling anything, but I honestly just don't really have words to describe it because I just loved it that much. And anything that can emit that much emotion from me instant five star like I adored this book from start to finish. I feel like it was perfectly long. It was short enough that I didn't get bored. It was snappy straight to the point. My emotions were on a constant high literally the whole way through it so thoroughly did enjoy this and since then I've had so many messages from people on Instagram basically saying that they're too scared to read this book and take this as your sign. If this has been on your shelf or on your TBR for a long time now and you're like I've seen mixed things I'm scared I'm gonna cry just do it just do it. Someone asked me if it had a happy ending and I was like it depends on how you look at it like whatever's happy to you is happy to you babes chef's kiss. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly address the outfit. If Sarah wears something that I think is cute, I'm gonna buy it too and I'm gonna wear it, okay? Don't judge me. I've even got the headband. I'm giving Sarah Caroli today and I'm not mad about it. But our next book is If He Had Been With Me by Laura Nolan and this is one that, again, I've wanted to read for the longest time but I've been purposely saving for this video. One of my besties, Kaya, absolutely sobbed her heart out when reading this book. She has basically been begging me to read it since. She's like, when are you reading it? When are you reading it? I even posted a picture of it the other day and she was like, have you started reading it? I was like, no, not yet. Give me a minute. But now now is that time. Today is the day. This is the book we're gonna start. I've 100% heard mixed things about this book. Some people love it, some people hate it, so I'm excited to see like where I fall on that spectrum. I'm nervous, but I'm gonna go in now and I'm gonna get it started and this is meant to be really sad, <laughs> so I don't think I'm ready. You know when I was reading Say You Swear and I said that I love it when the author puts the name of the book in the book. I'm on page two and Miss Laura Nolan has already done it. I'm on page two and she's already put, if he had been with me, everything would have been different. <sighs> I love it already. <laughs> Just from that alone, I love it already. This is the second book in a row now that I've got like a childhood friends to lovers where they live next door. So am I going to get confused between the two? Probably. But I'm going to try my best <laughs> to deal with it. So I was just about to update you on my first impressions of If You Had Been With Me. And then I realised that again I've forgotten to give you the actual summary of the book and what it's actually about. It literally is my worst booktube habit. I just assume that you already know the books I'm reading. I mean yes. Google does exist, so if you are curious, you can just Google it, but it is nice to just be given some background information. Anyway, I will say, I am actually going into this book a little bit blind. This is the book that I know least about out of all the books that I've read so far in this video, but from what I'm aware, it's a childhood friends who end up falling apart, similar to the last book, and they don't speak properly for a couple of years, but obviously they're in close proximity to each other because they're neighbours, so they sort of have to see each other, they sort of bump into each other all the time. They end up getting with other people. Our main female character, Autumn, basically realises she still has feelings for or the main male character called, what's his name? Finn. Finn. I nearly said Noah. What am I thinking of? Say you swear. Sorry. But yeah, she realises that she still has feelings for him and basically just wants to get him back. But it says on the back here, as time passes, Autumn realises that she might not get another chance to make things right before it's too late. So I'm terrified. <laughs> what the hell? I'm currently on page 52 and I want to say that the writing style in this is so fast paced. And obviously that is one of my favourite things. It's kind of like a weird writing style. Some that I haven't really read before, but it literally just says it in short, snappy, quick sentences, short chapters. The last book that I read had very, very long chapters. There was a chapter that was like 40 pages long and the book was fairly short, so it didn't really matter. But having short chapters is like an absolute godsend to me because I haven't had like a two page chapter in ages. And I'm very, very thankful right now that this 
it's such short chapters in it. I am actually really thoroughly enjoying this so far. I feel like I haven't enjoyed a book this much this early on in a while. At the first chapter I was like, I love this. I love this already. So I am just waiting for it to break my heart, but we will see. I'm over halfway now. And can somebody please tell me, for the actual life of me, why this girl was going around every day wearing a tiara and ripped jeans? I don't think I can comprehend that outfit in my mind. I'm wearing a tiara on a birthday, not that bad. But every single day, a little bit excessive. I'm literally nearly 200 pages in already. I feel like this is gonna be such a quick read because I literally just wanna sit and binge it, which is so good. But I just wanted to update that I'm getting some bad vibes from a character that I didn't really wanna get bad vibes from. I feel like there is a certain character in this book that arguably you're probably supposed to feel bad for, but I'm not getting them vibes from him. I'm getting negative vibes. I'm getting snarky vibes and bad intentions, like morally gray vibes, but not in a good way. So I'm intrigued to see what happens with that and thoroughly enjoying this so this should be a good read i'm excited to carry on obviously i haven't cried yet which is really really sad considering how much i cried at the last book but i think this is probably going to be one of them reads where i'm sad all the way through but i don't cry and then one thing happens at the end that just makes me break down completely so i have a feeling that all this emotion is going to get sort of like join up into my mind. I'm gonna probably end it here for tonight, have a lovely little sleep, and then we'll see how I'm feeling tomorrow for hopefully the other half of the book. It is the next morning now and I've already binged 100 pages today which is very very good. I'm currently on page 301 so I literally have like 100 pages left of this book. There's definitely been hints so far what I've read today as to what the ending's going to be. Obviously we know like the main ending because in this book I'm not sure if I mentioned it already but you basically find out what happens at the start and then you see the journey progress over a span of like a couple of months or so. Definitely excited to read the next 100 pages. Okay, it is finally time to speak about my thoughts on this book. I've had a moment to think. I have gathered my thoughts and upon reflection, I'm thinking, I'm still not 100% sure even on that, but I'm thinking that I wanna rate this book either a four or a 4.25. And I have actually written down some things that I wanted to say. First of all being that I finished this book within 24 hours. I did not binge it. I read it basically in like two parts. I read 200 pages the first day, 200 pages the second day, but it was all obviously within 24 hour period, which shows that I really enjoyed a book. And I'm going to put that down to the writing style. I feel like it was short, snappy, but in such a good way that you couldn't really get bored. It wasn't overly descriptive. It was straight to the point. And I feel like it was written as if it was a 15 year old telling the story, if that makes sense. Because if you didn't know, this is a young adult book. And the main characters, I think they span from about 15 to 18 in this book, maybe even 19. But you can really tell the voice that the author gave the characters showed their age, but in a good way. It didn't seem too childish because there were definitely themes in this that would be considered an adult book, but it was written in a way that a young adult could read if that makes sense and that being said along with the characters as well I feel like most of the thoughts that the characters had in their head most of the things that they said I related to as a person when I think back to like when I was 15 16 17 whatever I basically had the same thoughts as the characters I related to them quite a bit actually I was never the most popular person in school I was definitely in that gray area like I wasn't the most popular but I was sort of like in the middle if that makes sense now this is what we've been waiting for this book did not make me cry it did not make me sob especially like a thousand boy kisses did it did definitely make me emotional it definitely made me feel things. There was definitely times where I felt like I was going to cry, but I feel like it didn't get to that point that everything just fell from my face, basically. Because as I've said briefly in this video before, something happens at the start and then you get the journey of it and then you realise what happens at the end. So there wasn't really anything emotional happening throughout the other middle of the book, if that makes sense. It sort of goes up, down, 
at a steady pace and then up again if that makes sense. I don't know why I'm relating things to roller coasters and things in this video, I'm just sort of like, yeah, that's what happens. So I apologise for that. But I will put my final rating on screen. Not sure what I'm going to settle on just yet, either a 4 or a 4.25 because I thoroughly enjoyed this book. But of course, that is a little wrap up of everything that we read in today's video. Obviously, we have Say You Swear. This one didn't really make me cry. I'd arguably say that this was the least sad out of all the books that I read. But to be honest, as I said before, I didn't even know that this was a sad book in the first place. Someone just told me that it was, so I decided to include it in this video. Then, of course, we have A Thousand Boy Kisses. This was a five star for me. It made me absolutely sob my heart out and I've been thinking about it non-stop since. I adored this book. And then obviously as you've just seen, if he had been with me, really enjoyed this one too. So that is what I read for this video. I'm really sorry that I didn't cry that much in this video. I mean I think the one book alone ruined me. But if you did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. Comment your saddest book that you've ever read or the book that made you cry the most down below and I will hopefully see you in my next one. Thanks for watching. Bye! <laughs>